the AC is off for the moment, so that helps a ton. But when that AC is cranking, um, the projection is just not the same. So welcome back. Uh, so if I say to any of you, hey, I got some feedback for you. What's your initial reaction? Let me hear it. Yeah. Uh oh. What did I do? Yeah, we we have we the word doesn't automatically bring up positive thoughts, and it's like a. Um, Y'all might have noticed, might not have, I don't know, but sometimes when we think something negative, our body actually contracts along with it. So if we go, uh-oh, it's like our body kind of tenses along. Now, if somebody says, hey, I got some feedback for you, and your body is like this, how do you think that's going to go? <laughs> Probably not going to go that great. So I'm just... Um, we're going to start with giving uh, feedback, talking about giving feedback. But I'm inviting you just to look at feedback from a different perspective. Because communication, it's not just about the skill. It's largely about the intention. Mindset is what it comes down to. So I know people that don't have any communication skills but their mindset is in the right place. And so it goes well, right? Their communications go well. So if we re-gear our thinking and are open to looking at it as a gift, it can change, it can change the way we hear it. So part of why I mentioned this is there are some statistics out there, like if somebody goes to a restaurant and they're really happy about their experience. Tell me about how many people do you think they might tell? Five. Three. Two. Three, but five, it's close. If they're unhappy, how many people do you think they might tell? <laughs> so do you want people to come to you if they have a problem with you, or do you want them to go talk to everybody else? Do you see what I'm saying? So the more we can be open to it, the more people will be willing to give it to us directly, and then we can work with it directly instead of hearing about it later or whatever. You guys know how it goes. So people have the need, when they have an experience they're not comfortable with, to talk about it. Ideally, they're talking to you directly if it's you. You know, we, we want to kind of open the door to that. So we are on page 11 in the book, and we're going to talk first about roadblocks. The 11 and the, I'm sorry, the white binder. Got to be clear there. <laughs> can you guess which one I am yet? <laughs> if you don't know already, can you guess? Um, so these are some common roadblocks to giving feedback. So these are some things that if I were giving you feedback, I could do wrong. I shouldn't say wrong. I could do that would, that would put up a barrier, right? So we're starting with the idea of giving feedback. So if I come in blaming you, if I come in focusing on all the things you've done wrong, if I come in um, trying to give you feedback, but I'm trying so hard to be nice that I'm not getting to the point, right? These are all things that are barriers, roadblocks. So I'm going to give you some examples. I want you to just shout out loud, what, which one of these blocks, roadblocks, you think it is? So if I say, Jane, I don't think you're trying very hard. That's the feedback I'm giving Jane. Which one of those am I doing? Vague. Yeah, it's vague. What else? Focusing on the person, for sure. And I'm kind of blaming, in a way. You are creating problems by being late with the ABC report. Blaming. Yeah, blaming, yeah. So how, you see how that feels? <laughs> it automatically you feel like, someone's just coming right at you. All right, this one is two. Week after week, 
the same report is always late. Why can't you get your work done on time? Say again? Exactly. exactly, yeah. But how many of us do that, right? We focus on what we don't want instead of focusing on what we do want. Instead of asking for what we do want, we're like focusing on what's not working, which sometimes we have to identify quickly so that the person can identify it, but then you want to refocus the efforts. Wait, before you go on, what, what else though? When, they, when, when somebody says, you're always, always oh, late. Yeah. Thank you. All, when you're always something. All or nothing. Yeah, it's like black or not white, all yeah. or nothing. Yeah, it's all or nothing or black and white. I think we had it later. Some, so, okay, here's another one. Sometimes it seems like maybe some things don't get done when they need to, and this can mess other people up. I know you're a good employee and you have a good attitude and you're doing your best, but we still need things done on time. So vague. So vague. It's like, what the hell do you want? <laughs> you know, what do you want? What are you looking for? Yeah, super. Now, if we string all these, all these things together that I just said, without a pause, then we're looking at making it a monologue. Okay. So when we're giving somebody feedback, it's not a speech. It's a conversation. Right. But we oftentimes just get into a mode and we're like trying to think about what we're trying to say and we forget that we're actually having a human being in front of us that there should be a conversation going on. And these aren't the only roadblocks. These are just <laughs> six that we decide to hit. There are many, 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 many more than, than that. And yeah, we'll does anything else as we go through the day. Yeah, does anything else come to mind like being a barrier or a roadblock to um, giving feedback? Like how somebody can give feedback in a way that creates uh, this? Not enough information, not enough information, unclear. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna jump to um, how it's more helpful to give feedback. So some things that you just may not think about. When we talk about, um, when we talked initially about how sometimes we don't have a positive reaction, whether we're receiving feedback or frankly even giving it, we can feel anxious about it. So we talked about that, um, but we didn't talk about that it's actually a skill. There's actually some things that you want to make sure to do and some other things that you don't want to do so that what we say is heard. The bottom line, our intention is we want it to be heard, right? But if we're speaking um, from the place of more of the barriers, it's less likely to get heard. So the steps are just as, as it starts there um, with picking a good place and time. So this sometimes can relate to type. There are some types that are fine, pop in my office anytime, and then there are others that are like, I want you to let me know if something's coming. You know, I don't want you to pop in and start just talking to me. You know, set an appointment or let me know you want to talk about something so I have a little time to think about it. So we don't want to be talking in public. I know for some of you it might be tricky. Some of you work in the shop. You know, it's open floor, right? I'm assuming it is. <laughs> It's been a while since I've been out there. So picking an appropriate time and place where there's privacy and the person um, knows you want to talk. And then um, planning ahead. So this is about making a little bit of a plan. I'm not saying take an hour. I'm saying just map it out a little bit. How can you word things so that it's clear and concise? So that the person is very clear on um, initially the feedback uh, on what you want them to change. And then sharing the impact, the why, is super important. If you tell people what you want or don't want, but they have no idea why, they're less invested in making a difference and making a change. So if you help people understand why you're asking for something, it helps it to click. Um, expressing the desired behavior. So that's where we talked about on the other one where we don't want to just sit and harp on everything that's going wrong. What's more important is to clarify what, is, what do you want? What are you looking for? Number five is the timeliness. We don't want to 
three months ago, do you remember when that report was late? I'll be like, what are you talking about? You know, we don't want to bring up old stuff. So timely is super important. And then um, confirming understanding. So Amy and I are going to actually, and that's like summarizing the conversation. So you don't want to start a conversation and then not have a conclusion. Like you want to have some, okay, I understood. This is what we talked about. Here's our bullets. What's going to happen next? We don't tend to want to give feedback to begin with. So sometimes we get out what we want to get out and then we leave because <laughs> we like that enough. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. Can anybody relate to that where it's a little awkward giving feedback or receiving feedback? It is for most of us. It is for most of us. No matter how skilled or unskilled, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, it's not always an easy thing. So is this where we're doing our role play? This is. Okay, we're going to play now. We're going to role play. Okay, so on page 14, we want you all to look for where we're using these steps. So give us some feedback afterwards. And um, in real life, we would not be sitting this far apart. So when we're giving feedback to somebody, we don't want to sit across the room. We don't want anything between us. We don't want a desk between us if, if we can help it. It's a barrier, like literally. Um, so pretend that we're sitting close to each other. And then Amy's going to give me some feedback. Right. And we have, I already set up the meeting. We, she agreed to it. So the, pick, the time and place we've already done, OK? So Lauren, I wanted to talk to you about the ABC reports. I've been getting feedback from the uh, XYZ department that they've come in late the last three weeks. Can you help me understand what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I do realize that the reports have been late, but only by like an hour or so. So I didn't really think it was a big deal. Why is hitting that uh, exact time so important? Well, because when the ABC report doesn't get done by three, then Mark has to stay late to get the processing complete, and this creates issues for him. Okay, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I just thought it was like three-ish. So if I had something else that came up, I would just move it back a little bit. But I didn't know, and I appreciate you letting me know, and I'll talk to Mark. Yes, the dead, that's why the deadline is 3 p.m. So he has from 3 to 5 to process the information. This ensures it will be a complete when he leaves work. I'll make sure to hit the exact time now that I know why it's important and I understand it. And I'll also check in with Mark. So thank you for letting me know. You are welcome. <laughs> so what skills did we use there? What steps did we take? First of all, was I clear and concise? Yes. yes. OK. And did I share the why? Yes. And so Lauren was not ready to fight me. It's only been an hour. What are you talking about? OK. Yeah, we'll, maybe we'll, maybe we'll inside give you one she of those was later. thinking that. Yeah. And then express the desired behavior. If you would please get it in by three, so because this is why it's important. OK. And then ensure feedback is timely. And it's, you know, it's been happening three weeks. Maybe I should have done it after the second. But you, know, you want to give somebody a chance to follow the rules. See I don't know. That's, that's ind individual. I mean, what would you think would be a timely um, feedback? And then confirm the understanding, which is what she did. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So it doesn't always work that way, though, does it? <laughs> no. And why doesn't it? Because we have the barrier, the roadblocks, a lot of times. Yeah. So part of what we want y'all to be thinking about is <clears throat> there's some of these steps that are going to come naturally to some type preferences. And there's some of these steps that are going to be more of a stretch for certain type preferences. All we really care about is for you to identify for you which are the things that are going to come naturally. I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to do it. And which are the things I need to stay conscious of because it's not going to be natural for me. Does that make sense? So can you think of things already? that you wouldn't maybe naturally do in this list? Like maybe you yell across the room, hey, so-and-so, why didn't you blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's easy to get comfortable with people and think that's OK, but most people don't like being called out in front of other people. Especially seeing the majority of people in this room, in particular, are introverts. Yes. These tend to care a little bit less. All right. So the steps are important, but, and, and that's why I say make a little plan. But again, your intention, your mindset is even more important than the steps. Like our, our ends might need to work harder on being clear and concise. 
because sometimes ends talk globally, broadly. So they may need to work on being more specific and concrete. Um, same sometimes with our Fs. Our Fs might talk around things because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. So they may need to work on just getting to the point so they're not softening it so much that the person doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Which can be a little bit of an issue. All right. So now we are um, going to look at basically the same, well, it's similar skills actually, but looking at it from the perspective of receiving. And like we talked about before, the more open we are to receiving feedback, the more people are going to bring stuff to us, which is the ideal, right? If, you got a, if I did something that upset you or messed you up or threw you off, come talk to me about it. That's what we really want. Okay, some of these are going to look sort of familiar. Okay, this is on page 16 <laughs> in your workbooks, okay? So think about, we called like, you know, on the last one it was all or nothing. It's also black and white thinking. There's lots of names that you can call these, so don't, don't feel like you have to memorize what, a, you know, what a, in particular a withdrawing or rehearsing response is. The concept is, what do we do to put up a barrier from really hearing what's being said? Or what, or what, what do we have preconceived in giving feedback? What barrier do we have for really saying what we're supposed to say? Okay. All right, you ready, Lauren? Yep. <laughs> All right, so Lauren, I wanted to talk to you about that report uh, for the ABC report. I've been getting feedback from the XYZ department that they've come in the last, late the last three weeks. Can you help me understand what's going on? I'm sorry, what? I said I wanted to talk to you about the ABC reports. You, you've been coming in late. Which reports are you talking about? The <laughs> ABC reports. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Um, you know, I don't really know what you're talking about because those reports are never late. I never turn those reports in late. That doesn't happen. Well, That's, they're supposed, supposed You're just wrong. I don't know who's been talking to you or what they're saying, but that is not true. You're really doing a role play, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't in the notes. I'm <laughs> I'm referring to the ABC reports that are due each Thursday at 3 p.m. Fine, whatever, whatever you say. I have other work to do right now. Well, let me just help you understand further. When your <laughs> reports are late, Mark can't get the processing done, and that's why they're due by 3 p.m. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I do. We'll have to talk after lunch, okay? Okay. I, I think maybe since you seem to be so preoccupied, are you going to be available at 1 o'clock? Yeah. Well, let's talk then. Okay. We'll talk then. So there's no way Amy could recover from that, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's really just readjust and talk later. Um, so what was I doing? Like all of the above. How did I do? <laughs> Getting defensive. Yeah. I think you covered Yeah, I tried to. It was planned to try to cover them all. So yeah, the last one was withdrawing, like fine, just forget it, right? So when somebody is approaching us and we don't like what they're saying, um, it, it, it's gonna sound a little simple, but we tend to go in one of two different directions and maybe both in the same conversation as I did here, but be aware of this. We tend to either get right back and um, push back if we don't like what they're saying, so that was the initial defensiveness. If we feel like we just can't win, or in that case, it's not really appropriate because she's my boss, I withdrew ultimately. So keep in mind and watch for those signs for other people. If they're getting louder or getting strong back to you, or if they're withdrawing, because that means you need to switch your approach up. Can you all relate to any of this stuff, real world? Yeah. All right. So do we get like an Oscar or anything yeah. for that? <laughs> and while you're relating to it, just kind of think of an instance where you were in that position. And it may not have been an obvious, but your thought process, only you know what you were thinking. So that thought process that you went through may have caused a real um, challenge in 
getting what's being told to you or, or giving what you need to be given to it. Think of real life, those real life situations. And if you can't think of one at work, because there's uh, no conflict or there's no problems at work, think of something at home. <laughs> talking to your child, talking to your spouse or your significant or whatever. Uh, I think you should be able to come up with something. So same thing, there's kind of steps. So it's a skill, receiving feedback. Sounds weird because you think, well, if I'm receiving feedback, I'm just sitting there, right? But no, it's really not. It's an active, again, conversation. So showing somebody that you're engaged, you're interested, you're listening. You want to literally listen with, the, even if your initial is like this, catch yourself, shift it, think about the mindset, like I prefer to get this feedback directly and um, listen with the intent of understanding versus the intent of responding. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Those reports are never late. Like, I wasn't really listening to her. I was already deciding how I was going to push back. Clarifying, asking more questions to better understand it. We're not all perfect communicators, so sometimes it needs to be made more clear. Confirming your understanding. So sometimes that's just feeding it back what the person said to make sure you're getting it. Now, acknowledging their perspective doesn't mean you agree with their perspective. It just means you're acknowledging that you heard what they said, or you hear how they're feeling, or you're understanding their opinion. It's important that you're expressing so that they know you've got it. And um, staying open and engaged, again, is not really a step per se, but uh, it's continuing. Now, when somebody gives you a gift, whether you like it or not, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. So just kind of keeping that gift analogy. You say thank you. You're not going to be like, Grandma, these are the ugliest socks I've ever seen in my life. What are you thinking? Take these back. You're going to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So um, on page 18 in the white binder, under application, just, just reflect on that, kind of answer yourself, you know, jot some notes, and then um, share it with it, it pairs or threes at your table. Well, just, just kind of relate to some of these things, and then kind of see if you can tie it into what your type is. Oh, okay. You know, like, do, are there, what, is there a roadblock that you usually come up with, like, you know, my husband never listens to me because he's always rehearsing what he wants to say to me instead of what I'm saying. Can you relate to that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and how does that relate? And so, so Dave, like, my husband t rehearsing to me and wanting to tell me how to fix things, what, what do you think that he is in his type? He is ENTP from here. Well, he's actually a J, but, a J, yes, but yeah. yes, the T is what's, what's key. Right. I don't care that you don't want me to tell you. I want to tell you how to fix that problem. Right. You know? And so I have to take a step back and go, okay, let's start from scratch here. And sometimes I don't get halfway through and he already knows where you're he, he doesn't he knows even where know what the problem is and he, he tells me the response. Right. That's right. I mean, so we can relate to this stuff. Yeah. So I need to be thinking about your real life and what your type is. Yeah. 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 Where's the questions? Like going through the process? I think it's more like the roadblocks. And well, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, if you identify the roadblocks, that's the biggest hurdle to overcome. You're a T. Okay. And so that part of it comes into play. So that's why I say, can you relate it to like your type? Because there are reasons. So if you're dealing with somebody who's going to be like, you have to deal with kick gloves, it's probably like, they're so sensitive, I can't even stand to deal with them, you know? But the fact is, that's okay. And especially, sometimes our types get more exaggerated as we get into areas of conflict or areas of challenge like that. So that's it's, it's only just to kind of get you start thinking about next time you're in a communication with somebody, is there something that you could do a little different? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, I don't, we don't expect you to memorize these six steps. But if you understand, if you don't get it, you say, can you tell me more about that? And then if that still doesn't work, say, this is what I'm hearing you say. And if they say yes or no, you might say, well, I still don't get it, but let's agree to disagree and move on. Let's reconvene as a large group. Go ahead and wrap up your small group discussions. Um, 
So here's an example of how we can relate it to type. I know you guys had stuff going on your, at your table. So for example, on page 16, let's look at that for just a sec. If somebody's giving me feedback and I'm, in my, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to respond, um, who's like, well, I, I don't even know if that one makes sense, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Who would be more likely to rehearse a response? An I or an E? I or an E? You know, and I'm, I, after I asked this question, I saw it two different ways. Yeah, because eyes do tend to think before they talk, but E's like to talk so much <laughs> that I'm going to just say it. They're not always as good of listeners. They're not listening as much because they're thinking already about how they want to respond. So it actually could be either. I realized that after I started to ask the question. But if you're rehearsing your response, are you listening to what's being said? No. Whether you're an I or an E, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Bring it home, Amy. Bring it home. That's the point, what she just said. <laughs> Seek first to understand is really what it comes down to. How about black and white thinking? There's two different places this could come in. S or could be T, could be T. If we're talking S or N, who's going to think more black and white? S's tend to think in absolutes. So this is what I mean by how can we relate this to our type. So S's, just be aware, sometimes we can, as S's get into it, it is or it isn't. It's the S side of the block or the F side of the block, one or the other. When in truth, it's all different angles. So there's all kind of things on those blocks. So anything um, you guys want to share in terms of what you came up with? Sounded like some good discussion going on on page 18. Listening. Listening. Is that come naturally to you or not naturally to you? Not naturally to you. OK. OK, so that's huge. That's huge. So now you know, like, I got to stop and just kind of like, even though I don't really want to listen, it's really best in the long run. <laughs> Good. But again, y'all, the point is really for you not to remember all this stuff, but to pull what's going to be relevant for me to focus on. The changing, okay. changing of the guards. So, grace, so graceful. Yeah. What, what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to just take in, this, in the area of giving and receiving feedback, and we're going to talk about how, how does each of the continuums relate. We, talk, we touched on it a little bit. All right. And this isn't meant to be overkill. This is meant to do exactly what Lauren just said. It's to understand your behavior today and what kinds of things can you do tomorrow that will help knock down some of those roadblock barriers to better communicate. All right. So the E and the I, we already talked about it. E's external world, I internal world. All right. And I said it earlier, often E's speak before they think. They like to get that out there, get the energy from the outside world. And eyes, like Lauren just said, think about it first. Let me think about what I want to say before I say it. All right? So external world, internal world, right? Energized by interacting with others, all right? Uh, I don't believe this is, you can take notes. I think there's a page in here. You can take notes, yeah. So a reflection in your inner world, that makes total sense, OK? And I think that's by definition, that's what we use those words to mean, um, introvert, extrovert. All right? Openly expressive, what do you think an introvert is? Inwardly expressive, right? Private and self-contained. Doesn't mean they're shy, they're snobby, it doesn't mean any of that. It means that they're doing some internal processing to get, to get out, to, to think about what they want to get out and what they want to contribute. All right? Prefer face-to-face -face communication, all right? Prefer written communication. Written communication is so much easier, and correct me if, I, if, if you don't agree with me, introverts, it's easier to think about what's being said and then think of, process through what a response might be to that, all right? And then talk it out. What do you think introverts do? They think it through, all right? So think about a person that you, if you're an I, think about a person in your world that you think is an extrovert and see if you can relate to any of these things. All right? Or if you're an E, think of a person in your world that's an introvert. It doesn't have to be somebody at work. For now, just think of it, just kind of to relate it to your world. 
whatever, somebody at home, a child, a spouse, a significant other, a friend, all right? So this is an activity. So what we're going to do is we have four flip charts, all right? And so this is going to be a challenge. Yeah, you got it. Does anybody want to explain what that one means? Are they, yeah, go ahead, Victoria. It makes us feel good because we have so many things in our head that we got to get it done, get the list complete. Okay. Okay. So it's 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 that internalizing what needs to be done and then being satisfied. Now, we haven't talked a lot about what other part of the Myers Briggs continuums might this be related to? Who said it? Who said that? Say it again. Absolutely, it, Christy. Yeah. Absolutely. The J's, and we'll talk more about that. But J's like lists. Yeah. Let's check it off. Let's get it done. Okay. And that's, you can see that there's an overlap in this stuff. Okay. And there's, it's not the end all be all. It's just to show you a trend and to figure out how you can better communicate. Okay. Um, anybody want to comment on any of these? Lauren, do you have a comment on any of these besides that one? No. I'm just looking for the commonalities. Yes. I just noticed there's, Meetings are draining for both, on both groups for eyes. And depending on the meeting. <laughs> Not this one. No, thank you. <laughs> but look at on the ease chart. Where do you find meetings on the ease charts? Yeah, on this one anyway. Yeah. Um, Free lunch again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. That's so why you all are here. Happy, right? <laughs> That's right. Right. So, so yeah. So to, again, it's just to give you an idea of things to think about, not not to say, okay. So, do you like meetings? Don't like meetings? You must be now. You must be need. No. Just put that into your thought process. Okay. When you're sitting in a meeting and somebody's nice and quiet and just sitting there. And you're just like, how come Amy's not talking more? Oh, she's an I. No, she's processing internally, and that's OK. All right, she's thinking about what, what she wants to say. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an important one, because this is the feedback that I get from Ease, is that when eyes are not as engaged as they are, they don't understand, they take it personally. So keep in mind, Ease, eyes are just not talking as much as you. It's not that they're not interested, right? Eyes, can you kind of back me up on, on that one? Yeah. 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 Oh, look at this, Lauren. This one has working with extroverts is draining. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the interruptions. Now, <clears throat> somebody put computer work is energizing. Like, I can barely stand being inside my skin if I have to spend too much time on the computer as an E. I go crazy. I get so bored. I get anxious. I get so bored that I literally will get anxious so if I have to sit too long. No, what do you think, Lauren? <laughs> I'm not a high E, but I'm an E. <clears throat> so I'm not an extreme one, but I'm on the E side. But I, I need to be interacting with people. 
or I get like, ad, like I don't know how to explain it, anxious. But look at this too. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. You had mixed up. All right. Yeah, that is, isn't it? Multiple tasks. Yeah. So the bottom line walking away is, again, that eyes are internally processing stuff. Doesn't mean they don't care. Doesn't mean they're not interested. Doesn't mean they're not engaged. It's just they're thinking before they talk. So who's going to be more likely the foot in their mouth? E. e. If we had to pick one, not to say that we all do that all the time, but if we had to pick one, E's are more likely to talk as they're thinking. They're thinking as they talk. They know what they they know the conclusion they arrived at because they've heard their, some, themselves arrive at it, <laughs> literally talking it out loud. And this group, too, y'all took a little bit longer. And I wonder if it's the nonconformists, because our ENTPs and our INTPs are generally our nonconformists. They don't want to follow the rules. Like, rules are there as guidelines, you know? <laughs> They're there as guidelines. If they make sense, we'll follow them. But if they don't, we'll find a way to kind of... <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I want you to think about um, if you're an I, how do you feel when someone just pops in with they want to talk about something? Uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You might be in the middle of something. You know, you might want to have time to think about. Give me a, give me a heads up, all right? Versus um, you want it written or verbally. Well, wouldn't it be nice, eyes, if they would have sent you an email or text or whatever the communication is to say, are you going to be available in a little bit? I'd like to talk to you about X. Wouldn't that feel a little Eyes, bit? Tell me what you think about that, tell us. I don't agree with that. You don't? Yeah. Because especially written, there's a thousand different ways to, to read someone's like text message without a text message stuff because when you just okay. read it in 60 different ways and, yeah. and some of them sound like they're happy with you and some of them sound like they're really pissed. How about if they just say subject uh, you know, um, the meeting tomorrow. Touching base. Yeah, t yeah. I mean, it depends on what it is that they're getting to. Duncan, I, I mean, maybe I'm it's in your mouth, but um, like other eyes. What do you think? Duncan said that that t texting that kind of doesn't work. Yeah. A written communication. Yes or no? You like written communication? How many eyes really think I, I'd rather have? Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Well, right here is an example of do not cookie cutter people. Right. Okay? Because this is not the matter of right or wrong. This is a matter of who somebody is. All right? So you have to go to them to where, where they are. And thank you for sharing that, Dave and Duncan. I appreciate that. All right? So you can see that. Expect, same with that. Um, how about ease? How do you ha feel about somebody just popping in on you? It's fine. They have something to say. Come on in. Let's talk about it. Exactly. Right. Okay. This isn't about making things complicated. This is about just taking a look at the individual for who they are and identifying things about them that might, maybe you can change, knock down a barrier, a roadblock. You can change the way you're thinking and approaching them to help better communicate. Okay, giving and receiving feedback. Good. So extroversion, introversion, let extroverts say, let's talk about this more. Introverts say more about, well, what do you think about this? Okay. What do I think about this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the SN. This is the one that's a little bit trickier to identify. And I know I, we went through this with some of you in our one-on-ones, not everybody. But they're real different in terms of how they, the S's and N's are real different in terms of how they think, how they process information. So S's, very uh, grounded in the present, very uh, tuned into what's happening right now in the moment, now, think now. N's, how can we, I don't really care so much how we're doing it right now, I've got a better idea for how we can do this in the future. So N's are global and future. S's are literally work with their five senses. So a lot of times you'll find people that are hands-on who are S's. So um, they don't want to talk about theory. They want to say, prove it to me, show it to me. Let me see it. N's will focus more on, less on the concrete facts and more on patterns and trends in the facts or in the data, so to speak. So S's might like to look at raw data, N's would want to look at what are the trends in the data. 
S's are going to tend to um, more easily hang on to details. They're going to tend to more, you know, like be able to say what somebody was wearing and um, what did they look like and what color was their hair. N's won't necessarily remember that kind of detail. And <clears throat> N's are going to think more abstract. They're going to remember less the details of something but the gist of it. Like, hey, that was a really good meeting. We got something done. But they won't remember the details of the meeting as much. Um, S's, that last one is, uh, yeah, prefer facts, but also sequential information. So when you're talking with an S, or you're receiving information as an S, it's step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. It's like, give it to me in a way that makes logical sense. Whereas ends prefer, um, they don't want all the steps. They just want, tell me the gist of it. Tell me the bottom line. Give me the relevance. What's relevant here? So like, I'm an N. I know Amy wanted you to guess, but I can't help it. And when I look at a bulleted list, this is unusual for me to go bullet by bullet. I normally will look at a bulleted list, and I'll zero in on the one that I think is most relevant and just speak to that. Okay. So those of you who are SN, you, are, you, are you feeling like any clearer on that? Okay. So you can see where in work it could get a little confusing sometimes. Like um, when, I'm, when somebody who is an N is asking for an information or an update, like um, I have somebody that does some admin work and I was like, how is that database going? She gave me a one by one, like a play by play, literally, of all where we were. Whereas in N, I was just asking, is it moving along in the right direction? And are we on time? You know? Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah. So again, it's like I wasn't clear as an N. I was asking her the question how I would expect me to answer. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? That's where I talk about the lens at the beginning. We're expecting other people to act how we would. So this is what we're going to do in a minute. I'm going to show you a picture, uh, an image up on the screen. I'm going to leave it up there for 15 seconds. And um, then I want you to describe afterwards what you saw on the screen. So this is what we're going to do, the same thing we did before. This time we're going to have S's go to those two flip charts in the back, but just split yourselves up through your about the same number of people. And then N's are going to do the same thing up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. Thank you. <laughs> What are y'all seeing as a major, like, kind of bottom line difference between the S lists and the N lists? <laughs> so somebody tell me what you see as the difference. So there are a couple things happening. One is, like, the gist is it's clutter. That's the gist. That's a gist, right? That's a gist. So you guys have, like, airplane. You're focusing on things, specific, specific things. Here, cool toys in general. So cool is an interpretation. It's not an airplane, which is no, it's black and white. An air, it is an airplane. There's no judgment. There's no interpretation. There's no meaning. So ends are really putting their spin on it, right? Porter. Do we know he's a hoarder? <laughs> right? So again, it's like we ends will look at things and they'll draw conclusions from it. They'll look for meaning in things. So no free space, same thing. It's not looking at a specific thing. It's looking at what's the essence of what's going on here. Well, it's cramped. Um, collectibles. We can assume it's probably collect. Oh, you see, you're talking about the sign? No, no you're right. Collect. Collect yeah, so we're going to assume. We're, we're drawing a conclusion that there's collecting going on. We don't know that. We're just looking at a man with a bunch of stuff around him. So what else do we have? So this is perfect. Airplane, robot, keyboard, old man. Um, <laughs> that, 
that part may not be nice, but there it is. Oh, older. Yeah, good. Okay. Probably a store. Okay. So here's an important thing too to note. As the S's got further down the list, they went to their N. And that's what we will do, all of us. We'll start with our most natural preference, and then we'll start to go in the other direction. So probably a store. Then they started inferring. But the most natural to go to first is one by one. This is it. This is application. So head on back to your tables, and we're going to look at some application. So this one, you have to dig a little bit, right? So this is not easy, and honestly, there's really no right or wrong answer. It's just more for our contemplation. So um, for the S and the N, which would more naturally share the Y? Why? So we're talking about giving feedback, and we're talking about steps that are going to be most natural and not. For the S or the N, who might, and again, it doesn't matter if the answers are wrong, y'all, so don't worry about getting it right or wrong, it's just the thinking through. The why comes more naturally to ends. The S's want to know, what do you want me to do, and how do you want me to do it? Ends want to know, what do you want me to do, and why? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What's our intention? So in terms of giving feedback, ends would more naturally gravitate that way anyway. S's may need to take an extra step and consider that, sharing the, the why. Second one, what about being clear and concrete when giving feedback? Is that going to be easier for the S, more natural for the S or the N? Yeah, N sometimes can be a little bit vague. No offense, ends. <laughs> we can sometimes, yeah, we can sometimes. Now, because of the industry you work in, I know so many of you from over the years, the ends are very S-like because you've had to become that way to function. And to, like, to be an estimator, you have to work that S, right? You can't not. <laughs> you have to work that S. So, um, okay, how about um, expressing the desired behavior, like what it is that you do want? Again, there's not a right or wrong answer. It's just in my head I have one, but it doesn't mean your answer is wrong. The desired behavior, it could be an S. What I had in my head was um, S's are present focused. So they're going to be focusing on what's going on right at this moment. N's are going to be thinking about what do we want in the future. So they may be more likely to focus more on what do I want to happen and less on what did happen that I don't like. Make sense? Okay. Was there another one? Yes. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. So just keep in mind, this, it's an S-dominant um, industry. It's an S-dominant company. You guys are less skewed than um, the rest of the company. Was that about, I want to say, 80% S's in terms of the whole? Um, why does that make sense? Tell me, what do y'all think? The in industry we're in, the specs and everything are some detailed hands on. And very yeah, very hands-on, very detailed, very, you built it right or you didn't, <laughs> right? It's not like, well, that's sort of okay. Well, you, well, sometimes maybe we might do that, but that's another conversation. <laughs> Let's hope that inspector's not paying attention here, right? Um, so what it means also, keep in mind, is we want to, remember at the beginning of the day, I was talking about how we see things through our, our own lens, and it's S-dominant, so there's a lot of S-lenses. We want to make sure that we're pulling in those ends because do y'all remember at the beginning of the day what Jonathan and um, Dave shared in terms of who are our other INTPs and ENTPs? Thomas Edison, uh, Einstein, our, our ends are our innovators. They're our visionaries. So it doesn't mean that S's don't have that capability. It means that ends more naturally do that. So when we're problem solving, we want to pull those ends in, right? For ideas, for thinking, for looking again. Like S's might look forward here, but ends are going to look down the road. So here's our summary. S's, just the facts. Just give me the facts. That's all I want. Ends are like, what does it mean? <laughs> or what's our goal? What's the purpose? So 
very different ways of thinking, but both equally important and valuable. All right. So we're going we're gonna to try for 30 minutes for lunch.